Hi there, welcome to X509 certificate tutorial. In this video, we will learn signature element, the algorithm data type, its OID representation using ASN.1 syntax notation. So this is the structure of X509 certificate. In ASN1 dot, we have sequence and its element. So the sequence contains of total 10 elements. Out of this 10 elements, there's two elements. One is called signature and another one is called subject public key info, which uses algorithm identifier as data type. Okay. So signature uses algorithm identifier and algorithm identifier is another sequence which has algorithm and its OID, object identifier, and its parameter as any defined by the algorithm optional. So this is the optional element. So another element is subject public key info, which uses algorithm identifier sequence also. So this video will talk about object identifier of of the algos and its conversion of hexadecimal values. So OID, this is the structure of OID. So it's a leaf, it's a tree structure where one is root, two is child of one, 840 is child of 1.2 and this whole OID is corresponding to RSA as defined in the RFCs and this is the corresponding hex value. This is another example of OID called certificate extensions. So 1.9.14 is the OID of certificate extension and this is the corresponding hex value. This is another example of OID of SHA1 RSA. So this is the OID and its corresponding hex value. So in this video, we will see how this OID is translated to the corresponding hex value. Before that, just have a quick glance of OID, how it is represented in RFCs. I have taken example of MD5 with RSA OID. The OID number is 1.2.840.113549.1.1.4 and so 1 in RFC is defined as ISO, 1.2 is member body, dot .840 is slash USA, dot .113549 is slash RSA DSI, dot .1 is PKCS, dot .1 is PKCS1 and dot .4 is MD5. So entire OID is translated to MD5 with RSA OID. Now we'll see the conversion of OID to hex. So four is pretty obvious. One is pretty obvious. One is pretty obvious. Zero one. The tricky part is one one three five four nine, which translate to eighty six F seven OD, and eight forty translate to eighty six forty eight, and one dot two to two A. So the conversion take place uh, uses the concept of variable length encoding. So first we'll see how the 840 is translated to 8648 hexadecimal value. So conversion of 840 to 8648. So first step what we'll do, we'll step 840 into binary. So this is the binary of 840, 1101010000. Next step what we'll do, we'll count how many bits are present and we'll divide by 7. So we can, we have divided this entire into seven, seven series, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three. Now we'll add higher order bits. The most significant bit will represent as one. So next step is I add the higher order bits and we can see one and we'll pad rest with zero, zero, zero to make it eight bit. And the next one will add a zero. So only most signification bit is added to one. So with this will finally translate to hexadecimal 8648. The next conversion of 113549 to 86 F7 OD. The same process is there. First translate everything to the binary. Divide into 777. 
So this is the after dividing we got this value 2 and 3 then we'll add two higher order bits here to make it one. So one is added here you can see one is here and one is here let's add it with zero to make it 8 bit 8 bit and finally zero is added. So this is 3 byte encoding so this is how the variable length encoding works and which will finally translate to 86 40 f7 od now this is the tricky part 1.2 to 2a so as per this spec it uses one uh, if you see the reference of x69 t a7 encoding rule there's one algebra for that it says 40x plus y where x is 1 and y is 2 40 into 1 plus 2 is 42 which translate to hexadecimal value of 2a you can always refer to in uh, detail asn.1 encoding rules and uh, these are the other references x680 uh, iso iec double a 2a4 thanks for watching the video do let me know if you have any question and don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you